Night in the Woods, despite sounding like the most generic and uninspired horror movie ever, is in fact a story-driven adventure game developed by Infinite Fall and published by Finji. You know, after I played through the boring schlop that was the Four Honor Story mode, this was exactly what I needed to remind me why a good story in games is so fucking important. I personally believe that a good story in a video game can carry the entire experience, and Night in the Woods story is... Mm, it's great. It's grande. It's genial. It's estupendo. I don't know any others. So in Night in the Woods, you play as May, a college dropout who comes back to her hometown to live with her parents. She catches back up with her friends Greg, Angus, and Bee, and everything seems fine and dandy for a while, but soon some creepy shit starts happening that involves nightmares, ghosts, and some creepy fucko that hangs out in the woods. Overall, the story is really good, and one thing I was surprised by was the game's use of narrative pacing. There are so many games out there that just drop you right into the middle of the action with no build-up or anything, and whilst that works fine for some games, I believe pacing can add so much to a story-driven game. And you don't really see too much of it these days either, so round of applause for that. The first couple of hours of this game are just spent wandering around your hometown, talking to your neighbours and hanging out with your friends who all have jobs whilst you remain unemployed. Yeah, I can, uh... <clears throat> I can relate. And this part of the game is very effective at drawing you in and getting you more immersed in the game's world so that when the mystery does start to set in, it means that much more to you because you're already connected to the characters. Pacing. And speaking of the characters, they're pretty interesting too, especially the main character, May. This game does have dialogue options, but still, usually no matter what you say, May still comes across as quite a complex character. She's snarky, sarcastic, rebellious, very likeable, but at the same time, quite flawed. It makes her seem very human, which is ironic because she's a cat! <laughs> The writing's also good, it's got a lot of sarcasm and self-deprecating humour, and if there were ever four words to describe my style of comedy, it's those. And it's quite, uh, how do I say this? Millennial, which basically means if you were to take a shot every time someone said like or whatever, you'd probably die. Ah, I'm just kidding, just giving you a bit of the old jum jum sass. The writing is good, and later on the story tackled some pretty deep subjects. The game world is nice too, the town you explore is very vibrant and generally looks really nice, plus the animation and art style is fucking beautiful. But one thing I really don't like about the game is how the main characters are talking animals, but there are also regular animals. I just- this always fills me with so many questions. How can there be talking animals and regular animals in the same world? Can talking animals mate with regular animals, or is that bestiality to them? If the talking animals understand that regular animals are animals, then what do they think they are? <sighs> Sorry, I just... I just have a lot of questions. You may have noticed that I've not mentioned the gameplay at all yet. Well, it's pretty fun and surprisingly varied. A lot of it is just walking and talking with your friends, but there are also quite a lot of fun, cute mini-games, like spraying water at people through a mechanical fish mouth, connecting the stars together to make consolations, and Guitar Hero. Seriously, there's Guitar Hero in this. It's fucking rad. There's also some puzzle solving and these dream sequences where you have to find four musicians. And there's also a little game you can play on your laptop that's actually pretty fun and yeah, I'm a sucker for games within games. I love that shit. Really, I don't have much else to say about Night in the Woods. It's only about six hours long, but honestly, in a game like this, the length is almost irrelevant. It's a good story, well told, and by the end, I wasn't craving more or wish there had been less. I was satisfied. But funnily enough, after I finished the game, I went to its Steam page, and in the screenshot section, I saw a bunch of shit I didn't recognize. So either there's some stuff I missed the first time, or these pictures are dirty lies. There's a lot to like about Night in the Woods. I like the writing, I like the characters, I love how great the game looks, and any game world where I can insert my Jum Jum creature and he doesn't even look that out of place automatically gets bonus points from me. So yeah, I really liked Night in the Woods, and I'd most certainly recommend it to you if you're a fan of adventure games, good stories, or getting electrocuted. Oh, fuck! Night in the Woods is like Leonardo DiCaprio, a perfect example of just how far a little little bit of charm and comedy can take you. Well, that and money.